cooperation with Nigerian International Securities Limited. The webinar will commence in a few moments, but before we get started, I'd like to take a minute to go through a few important guidelines which would help us all to derive maximum value from this event. First of all, attendees will be required to have a good running internet connection to be a part of the webinar. Secondly, there will be a question and answer segment during this webinar. Before then, however, attendees may write their comments or questions to the speakers at any time in the public chat space or signify and have their microphones turned on to ask questions. In asking questions, please include your name, your location, your organization, and indicate who your question is directed at. For technical and quality purposes, only the speakers will be able to use their microphones. Thirdly, while we'll be using a mobile-friendly application for the webinar, attendees will be advised to join the webinar from their laptops or desktops to ensure an optimum viewing of the presentations. The webinar will be recorded and attendees will be able to watch it later. A link to the recorded webinar and transcript of the recording will be shared within a few days of the webinar. I'd also like to use this opportunity to introduce our speakers and other important personalities at this event. With us here today, we have the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar Onyema O.N., the president of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers in Nigeria, Mr. Olatunde Amolegbe, the divisional head trading business at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Jude Chemeka, the MD CEO of Nigerian International Securities Limited, Mr. Laulu Martins, head of the market services department at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Femi Balogo, and the head of the retail investor recovery department at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mrs. Chidim Machukweke Okolo. My name is Ekechi Ogwa, and I will be your moderator for this event. We're about to officially commence proceedings at this webinar, ladies and gentlemen, and to do that, please allow me to introduce, to deliver the welcome address, the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar Onyema Oen. Thank you very much, Ekechi. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Nigerian uh, Stock Exchange Council and management, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome you to this inaugural Retail Investors Webinar tagged Capital Market Investing in a Digital Age. Investor participation is central to the growth and sustainable development of any economy. And the Nigerian Stock Exchange is committed to playing a critical role in the advancement of the federal government's financial inclusion goals. As part of our efforts to realize these objectives, we intend to facilitate conversations which will serve to equip existing and potential investors with the necessary skills to effectively manage and grow the financial resources at their disposal. In these engagements, we will also expound on the retail investment opportunities available in the capital market and the channels through which they can be accessed. The outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic adversely affected the global economy in various ways and at different magnitudes, grinding economic activities to a halt in many regions of the world. The Nigerian capital market was also negatively affected with the market witnessing a downturn in Q1 of this year. However, the market rebounded in the second quarter, and as at the end of August 2020, the NSC All Share Index has recorded an 18.9% increase from its position at the end of March 2020. In addition, the market also witnessed a growth in the percentage value of equity transactions contributed by retail investors, currently at 29% from the 21.8% recorded in 2018, 
and 24.72% recorded in 2019. These statistics do not only highlight the market's resilience in times of adversity, but they are also testament to the fact that market stakeholders were able to adapt to the unprecedented circumstances which came about as a result of the pandemic. Digital technology played a significant role in achieving the positive results recorded in the Nigerian capital market by helping to make significant services more easily as accessible. The market proved its ability to leverage the latest technologies in designing and deploying innovative solutions to keep abreast with evolving circumstances and investor preferences. Investors can now conveniently choose to trade electronically in an increasing array of product offerings that include equities, bonds, and various collective investment schemes available on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The exchange in our quest to be Africa's preferred exchange hub will continue to take advantage of the various opportunities presented by digital technology to redefine and improve investors' overall experience and ensure that it remains modern, convenient, and secure. We will continue to build on our accomplishments in the product development space to ensure that we deliver more effective and efficient channels to engage, support, protect, and interact with investors. Today, our determination to develop the market and strengthen investor confidence has birthed a number of technology solutions, such as the X Mobile app, the NSC's mobile application, which provides investors improved access to the capital market and related information. The X Data Portal, which is designed to cater to the data needs of stakeholders, and the X Whistle application, which was developed and deployed to strengthen investor protection, amongst others. These innovations are key to improving financial inclusion and increasing investor participation in our market. The Nigerian Stock Exchange is focused on ensuring that investors have a better understanding and appreciation of investment products offered in the Nigerian capital markets. And this webinar is aimed at providing attendees with strategic information about investment opportunities that are able, that are available to investors in our market and how they can be accessed. I would like to thank Nigerian International Securities Limited for collaborating with us to make this webinar a reality. I also would like to thank the president of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers and the chairman of the Association of Securities Dealers, Dealing Houses uh, of Nigeria for their continued support and participation in today's webinar. I welcome all the key stakeholders and attendees participating in this webinar. And I'm confident that the learnings from today's discussions would further encourage investor participation in the Nigerian capital market. I wish you all an informative and enlightening session, and I enjoin you to apply the knowledge acquired over the course of this webinar to your personal investment objectives. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, CEO.
Once again, ladies and gentlemen, that was the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Oscar Onyema, delivering the welcome address for this webinar and officially starting us off on the business of the day. Um, the president of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, Mr. Olasende Amolebe, we apologize, is facing some uh, uh, network challenges and we're working back in to fix that. As soon as um, that is sorted out, he will join us and deliver his remarks. So um, moving on, we will be moving to our scheduled presentations for the webinar. I would like to introduce our first speaker for the day who will be delivering a presentation tagged market data as a tool for achieving investment objectives. Please make welcome the head of the market services department at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Femi Balogo. Thank you. It seems there is an audio challenge. Uh, we can't hear anything. Uh, it appears that we're having some network challenges with uh, uh, the head of market services at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Femi Balogo. Um, we'll move on to the next presentation of the day, and that will be presented by um, Mr. Lau Lu Martins, who's the MD CEO of Nigerian International Stockbrokers Limited. Um, he's going to be delivering a presentation that is called Product Innovations and Opportunities for Retail Investors. Please welcome Mr. Lau Lu Martins. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time coming into this webinar. Um, first, I would like to thank the Nigerian Stock Exchange for giving our company the opportunity to, prevent, to present this um, paper today. Um, it is a privilege and um, we, we thank the exchange for that. Um, generally speaking, the general perception in the market is that retail investors are often left behind and do not have enough knowledge and um, information about the workings of the capital market. So it is interesting to note that the Nigerian Stock Exchange has over the years taken time 
and have been doing a lot of work to ensure that the retail investors are carried along and are made aware of various opportunities on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In order to do this, I would first give an introduction of Nigerian International Securities Limited. Nigerian International Securities Limited was incorporated in 1979, were issued a stockbroking license by the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 1980, and we are registered by the Securities and Exchange Commission as a broker dealer and as a corporate investment advisor. Our services are largely cut into two major segments. What we are best known for is our securities trading expertise. We possess a vast experience in trading on quoted and unquoted equities and fixed income securities. We are one of the top um, stock brokers on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. In particular, in 2009, we were 12th ranked by value of transactions done on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. There are over 200 stock brokers um, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Currently, we have thousands of investors that range from retail to small and large institutional investors. Our second basic um, service offering is our financial advisory service. Here, we basically offer bespoke consulting solutions to corporate bodies across the value chain of activities on the stock exchange. So from introduction of companies to the exchange to listing and capital raising endeavors in both equity and the debt space. In order to carry out these services in a very professional manner, we have imbibed an investment philosophy at NISM. Our philosophy is to ensure that we create a portfolio for investors which guarantee diversification across instruments which they're interested in investing in. And we use our research base to ensure that we drive investments in a way that we optimize returns and ensure that the risk parameters of such portfolios are kept at a minimum. We also do this to, in a way that we ensure the capital is preserved for the investor and the portfolio is liquid enough such that when investors need some of their funds or want to exit um, this investment securities, it will not be too uh, difficult. In order to invest properly, all investors need to carry out some sort of financial planning, no matter how uh, small, how detailed, or how um, robust. We realize that for retail investors, it's usually difficult to navigate this web of terms and uh, processes and you know, other um, issues that create a bottleneck or discourage investment, actually. Some of these um, processes or situations that create a lot of uh, difficulty for retail investors include um, some of the items listed here, budgeting, investment and um, savings, risk management, liquidity management, and the rest of them. At NISL, we have enough expertise, significant expertise, to ensure that we're able to help our investors to navigate this complex web of um, terms and processes, to ensure that their investment experience is not too difficult and is rewarding. I will now go into the main. Hello. I will now go into the main body of this presentation, which is where we actually talk about investment options on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We'll Did you have about, me now? We'll talk about the features of these opportunities and the showing as what? Yeah. Okay. Around them. Yeah. I think there's some um, audio clash. So please can other people um, please mute their mics, please, other speakers. Okay, right now we'll go into the major opportunities um, on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. The first and the most common, which everybody know uh, the Stock Exchange for, is the equities asset class. The equities asset class has to first be recognized as a long-term investment option. Equities generally 
uh, I, I'll try to give a very quick um, definition of what equities are. Equities are securities that provide investors a stake in certain companies. So basically, when you buy a stock, you're buying a part of that company. You're becoming part of the ownership of the company. The advantages that come with equities include the fact that you are, you are one of the owners, you have voting privileges, you have the advantage to enjoy capital appreciation from your, from your investments, and then you get dividend returns, which are usually paid annually. And for most of the equities, they are liquid, meaning that you can buy and sell when you desire to do so. Also, equities give you the opportunity Need to diversify your investment across various sectors of the economy. Some of the most um, active sectors on the exchange for equities are the banking, uh, the insurance, industrial and industrial goods, um, etc. The disadvantages of investing in equities are largely the fact that it is risky because the reality is the performance of that company would determine the performance of your investment. Also, the returns are not certain. You don't know for sure beforehand what you're going to get. However, it's critical to note that over the last couple of centuries, research shows that returns on equities is generally, has generally been very competitive and at times has been much better than other investment asset classes. When in order to invest in um, equities, there are various um, styles or strategies that various stockbrokers or fund managers adopt. And some of them include um, you know, the growth strategy, the value, the defensive, et cetera. However, I would also now talk about other options which are not as well known to retail investors and the general public. Most of these are various forms of collective investment schemes and are usually tailored towards various sectors of the economy. The first I'll talk about is the real estate investment trust. The real estate investment trust is a company that owns, operates, or, finance, or finances income generating real estate projects. It usually is a pool of various investors together so that they invest in projects which they could not have done on their own. And then the returns from these projects, or let me say real estate ventures, are paid as dividends over the life of uh, those projects. The advantage here is that retail investors with even little capital can actually buy units of a REIT and benefit from ownership of large malls, large office complexes, large real estate, um, sorry, large domestic real estate um, um, opportunities. The second I'll talk about is closed end funds. They are also sometimes called, they are also sometimes called mutual funds. A closed end fund is a portfolio of pooled assets. So generally they are also collective investment schemes. They raise fixed amounts of capital usually through an IPO or other means. And these securities are listed on the stock exchange for trading. Usually closed end funds are designed to invest in certain segments of the capital market. So you could have a mutual fund for equities, you could have a mutual fund for fixed income securities, and you could have a fund that is a hybrid. A hybrid means it has the proportion, a certain proportion of equities and fixed income securities together. Again, the advantage here to investors is that they're able to invest in a portfolio that gives you a very huge diversification across various asset classes without having to carry out those individual investments yourself. Usually the pay, the pay dividends at predetermined um, intervals um, they give competitive long-term returns over their life cycle. And then they also have the capital appreciation advantage with them. And they're usually liquid because the fund managers provide liquidity so that investors can invest, I mean, enter the fund or exit as they deem fit. 
The next major opportunity I'll talk about is the exchange traded funds. An exchange traded fund, otherwise called ETF, are securities that track the performance of an index or a basket of assets. So usually the performance of an ETF would derive its, its own um, individual returns from the index or the underlying assets that they track. So you could have an ETF that is set up to track pension fund assets. You could have an ETF that is set up to track um, bank, the banking sector um, securities, et cetera. The last opportunity I would talk about today is bonds. A lot of people do not realize that bonds are available for trading on the stock exchange. Most people think it is only equities that are available for trading. However, bonds are actually available for trading on the, on the stock exchange. A bond is a security set up by an entity, be it a government or corporate, be, it could be a company, to generate capital by borrowing money from the public at large. Usually bonds are set up to have tenures of three years or more. They're actually very long tenured bonds. I think in Nigeria today, um, one of the longest tenured bonds is the 2050, so it's a 30 year bond. So this securities provide an opportunity for investors to lock in their investment and they know the returns they're going to get beforehand because most bonds have fixed interest rates. There are pros and cons, obviously, to investing in bonds. Um, one of the major pros is the fact that your returns are known beforehand in terms of the coupon payments over time. Also, the government bonds are regarded as risk-free because in, inv in the investment space is regarded, it's um, perceived that any government is meant to survive into perpetuity. Therefore, a lot of pension funds, etc., invest a lot in bonds. And one of the major um, objectives of this um, webinar is to also provide their um, information, their awareness to the investing public, the retail investors, that you could actually buy bonds from the stock exchange. When you purchase a bond, generally, it's seen that you are lending your money, your funds to a company or a, a government entity. Usually bonds are rated by registered credit rating agencies. So what this rating, this credit rating means is that it gives you an idea of the strength of the issuer. So the stronger the, the rating of a bond, the higher the interest in investing in it. The lower the rating of a bond, the lower the interest in investing in it. And therefore, it is advisable that retail investors should approach their professional advisors, stock brokers, et cetera, to help them and guide them in which bonds they could invest in. I would quickly round up this segment of my um, presentation by summarizing what these opportunities we've spoken about present. Today, we all know that the interest rate on treasury bills, federal government treasury bills in Nigeria has fallen all the way down to about 3%. So for a one-year treasury bill, the return is about 3.1% or so. And when you consider the fact that inflation today is around 13%, it means that if you invest all your funds in treasury bills, it's only sure that in a matter of years, your capital actually would be eroded because the rate of inflation is far higher than the returns you're getting on your investment. So someone said to me some time ago, that if one invests only in treasury bills, it's only a matter of time before your bills grow to the extent that you realize that your treasury is not enough to cover your bills. And therefore, the equities opportunity right now present a very significant um, advantage over the treasury bill space because we have quite a number of equities, especially the blue chips that have dividend yields that's a return on, um, on the stocks from dividends. The dividend yields are way over 10%. Some examples include the likes of Zenith Bank, GT, 
Dangote cement, etc. Et I mean, your stockbrokers can always advise you on this. So when you consider that, you realize that an investment in equities today, in good investment, the blue chips, could give you 300, 400 times of, let me say 300, 400% um, advantage over investing in treasury bills. But as they say, the higher the risk, the higher the return. So one has to balance your objective of generating high yields or high returns with the, your risk profile. Another major um, point to note in this, uh, on this segment is the fact that some of these opportunities we've stated earlier provide access to niche investments. For example, when I spoke about REITs, you know, we mentioned that REITs are companies that are set up to invest in real estate projects. So you can imagine a REIT that has three or four malls across the country and has maybe two residential estates and one office block. You would realize that when you invest in a REIT, when you invest in a REIT, you would have the opportunity to partake in all those investments with very little capital. Some of the REITs available on the stock exchange would accept perhaps 10,000 to start with and um, various thresholds therefrom. The second advantage of these opportunities is the fact that the professional management around them is very high. So therefore, all you need to do is to invest and you do not have to go through the pains of understanding everything that the fund is all about because you have some professional manage, uh, managers behind them. We also have bespoke investment exposures wherein certain um, of the funds opportunities we've created, we've spoken about earlier, are designed to meet the investment objectives of uh, with certain preferences. So for example, you have the Lotus Halal Fund, which gives some of our Muslim brothers and sisters the opportunity to invest in halal securities. The last is the fact that when you invest in a lot of this collective investment schemes we've spoken about, you have what we call investment leverage, i.e. with your little capital, you're able to leverage on the group or the pool of investors that you are in, and they provide the necessary um, high level of um, professionalism to ensure that your returns are very adequate and competitive. In order to allow or to enable the retail investors access the market very easily and in a convenient manner, we, we, the Nigerian Stock Exchange over the last couple of decades has taken a lot of pains in driving the technology behind the market, so to speak. You, on the slide um, I have up here now, you see some of the major milestone, milestone steps the Stock Exchange has taken in order to provide um, the platform on which if, um, technology would be used to drive investments on the capital market. A major one I'll talk about is in 2013, when the exchange launched the new trading engine called XGen. This is a very, very robust trading platform that allows all brokers to trade and provides a lot of information um, required to enable everybody carry out their investments you know, with sound decisions. The next one, which is perhaps the most significant, is in 2016, when the stock exchange introduced the fixed protocol. Basically, this has enabled stockbrokers, fund managers to develop applications which enable any investor, whether small or big, to invest in the market without having to go to a broker and carry out physical um, activities. Therefore, we see that technology has come a long way and has helped and will continue to help the retail investor to partake in the market seamlessly. A very good example of one of these applications is the NISL ProTrader. Um, to be clear, almost every broker today has in some of these applications, but I'll quickly talk about the NISL ProTrader. The NISL ProTrader is an application that allows all our investors to access the market, to buy equities, some of the REITs, some of the mutual bonds, some of the ETFs, et cetera. It's a very robust system and it's easy to use. All it takes is perhaps a 30 minute um, setup 
and then you can trade from anywhere in the world because this is web-based. You could use your phone, your laptop, or other devices. It's advisable that all retail investors, as much as possible, try to talk to a broker, any broker they have, in order to use such applications, which is what the exchange is actually trying to promote. I would quickly take you through a few slides that sort of give you a, a brief overview of what ProTrader uh, looks like. So on the next page, we have what we call our dashboard menu. This basically shows the portfolio of any investor at any point, particular point in time. You see the value of your portfolio. You see the stocks you're invested in or the fixed income securities you're invested in. You see your balance, if you have any cash unused. You see the progress of any of those investments at any point in time. On the next page, I'll show you what typically is the market view. This is perhaps one of the most interesting um, features of this product because it allows you to see the market as a whole. You would see on the left-hand side, a drop-down menu that shows the various asset classes which are available for investment on the stock exchange. Like I mentioned, you have the equity space, you have the debt space, you have the ETFs. This is a very robust system and really everybody should take time to try to get hold of one of these applications because it allows you to do what you want in investments at any point in time. I'm running out of time now, so I'll just quickly take you through some of the last slides. The, on the next page, we have what we call the price volume chart. This enables investors to see what the market is doing and to help them make um, significant um, investment decisions. On the next slide, I have the buy order screen. This is perhaps when you want to buy um, an equity, for example, you key in the attributes of the trade you want you want to carry out, the name of the stock, the name of your um, your portfolio, the price you want to trade at, etc. On the next slide, we have the sell screen, which is just the opposite of the buy screen when you want to sell. On this slide, we have the reports, which helps you see your statement of account, the history of your transactions, the portfolio value, and and much more. I thank you all very, very much for listening to this presentation. We have our addresses and our contact details, our social media handles are also made available. Thank you very much all. Have a nice day and please stay safe. COVID is still very much around. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Uh, for those who may have joined late, that was the MD CEO of Nigerian International Stockbrokers Limited. Mr. Laulu Martins, uh, delivering an excellent presentation on uh, product innovations and opportunities in the capital markets. Uh, if I may quote from his presentation, uh, building transgenerational wealth is not a day's job, neither should it take forever. Uh, very powerful words and a, a suitable guide for every investor. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please remember that you can ask your questions at any time in the public chat space, and we will answer them when we get to the question and answer session. We're about to go now into the second and final presentation of the afternoon captioned market data as a tool for achieving investment objectives. Please make welcome the head of the market services department at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Femi Balogun. Thank you. Good, af good afternoon, everyone. I, I believe everybody can hear me and also So I believe that everyone can hear me now and see me as well too. Once again, my name is um, Rufemi Balugo. I head the market services at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. We are the custodian of the market data that is generated from the trading floor, which is the trading engine now. And it's actually interesting because that my presentation is coming after the MD CEO of uh, NISL, because certain things that is alluded to, I think that you know, it's better for me to now use that statement to tell individual investors how necessary market data is um, to their investment decisions. So we can move on to the next slide now. This is my uh, the outline. I'm going to introduce market data and its uses. I'm going to talk about the, the types of market data 
I'm going to show a use case, a practical use case of uh, market data, and I'm going to show um, the using market data supplement because you use it as a supplement. There are some people out there that are so good at picking stocks or stuff like that. But we believe that if you use data to drive your decision in conjunction with your expertise, you make a better informed decisions and investment. And now, now that you guys see our technology plays a major role into um, dissemination of market data. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, I was having a conversation with someone and I was trying to do a salesman and I was trying to make a pitch to let them know that, to let him and his organization know that um, they need to invest more in market data itself. And so when we discussed the price, he now said, made a statement. He said, your data is even more expensive than data that I have on my phone. But he made reference to that multiple times. And so, and other people have made that kind of comparison. So that was when I now had to put this slide up that to emphasize that because of what data is in our world today, that there's a major difference between the telco data and the data that you get from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. One of the major differences is the telco data just give you access to the amount of data they want you to get. So they give you 3G, the 4G, but the total amount of data, if you pay for 20 gig, that's what you're going to get. You cannot make decision on anything based on the data you get from telco. The telco can create a profile to see where and where you go when it comes to this internet of things. So now for market data itself, with an efficient market, what we're saying is that every information that you need to either buy or sell that instrument from the Nigeria Stock Exchange, be it equities, be it fixed income, be it ETFs, be it bonds, anything, that is traded on Nigerian Stock Exchange, that that market data has the necessary information. And virtually some people even believe that all information is right inside that data that you see. So when you see a price and you see is that moving up or it's moving down, they have a whole lot of information because anybody that's going to buy have the reasons for buying it. And that's the reason why the emphasis, the value add, and why that people have to pay for that thing because there's a value add to your investment decisions. So that's the primary difference between both of them. So can we go to the next slide, please? So now, what is market data? Market data is the data, like I said earlier on, issued by the trading venue, which is Nigerian Stock Exchange, such as securities exchanges, to inform traders and investors about latest price of a financial instrument, such as shares, derivatives, commodities, and exchange traded funds. So we have on the other side here, the users of it, trading activities. NISL have a market view. And if I remember vividly the structure of the market view, you will see where they have the prices of the instrument listed there. So that is trading activities. And you can see that they have a chart there that shows the price against volume. That is trading activities because they're looking at what is going on in the market based on that information that you're getting. So you don't have to be on the trading floor. You, you, know, you don't have to do all that because from that data itself, an additional part of it is news that is coming out of the exchange as well too, that you can use combination of both to actually perform trading activities. Then you have portfolio management. You've actually traded and it moves to the to the now to manage your positions and things like that, or on an index, like I said, the ETFs and things like that. So what happened there is now is you want to value it. So now there's mark to market of your portfolio. There you have the value at risk of your portfolio. You have to compute the expected shortfalls of, of your portfolio, the expectiles of your portfolio. So all those things you need the data to determine in the model that you're going to use to do that. 
You have market research and analysis. Those that are doing research on the graduate level come to us and they want to probably do some analysis and things like that. Educational guys comes. And you can see, if you look at NISL will have a research department that basically will use the data that they're seeing to actually use to advise their customer, actually use it to advise the traders as well too, based on the research that they're doing. Then you have risk and compliance. You have financial coverage news, which I mentioned earlier, because anything, for example, if say um, a, a listed firm that is into construction just got awarded a huge contract, billions of naira or even billions of dollars, and it comes right on the wire and the exchange put it out as a news because it's vetted to some extent, put it out as a news out there. Then if you look at the price of that particular stock, it will start ticking up because everybody knows that that means that the company will have better financial statement, their profit will be higher based on the deals that they're getting and things like that. So news is very, very important. And that's the reason why the exchange is actually putting emphasis on disseminating news symmetrically across the market. And we're using technology to do that as well too. Then the investment relations. For the listed firm, you wanna to talk to um, your investors, you can use the information of your trades, of how brokers, investors trade your stock on the Nigerian Stock Exchange to actually have a conversation with your primary investors or any investors that wanted to invest in your instrument. Can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so now types of market data, you have the real time. The real time is the most crucial one because it's telling you and it's less than 15 minutes. Actually on our side, you get it from the feed less than in milliseconds sometimes. Minutes, less than in milliseconds because as soon as it gets executed, it goes right on over the wire and gets to your application like NISL application. Then we have the delayed one. And it's considered any, any data between less than 15 minutes is considered real time. The delayed one is the one that now, because the real time one, you have real time information. For example, if you're doing intraday mark, marking and you're, you're doing intraday marking to model, that you have a model that you have developed and you want to see how efficient that model is in real time. You want to use real time data at that point in time. So then you're testing your model, but when you're building your model, you might use the delayed one, which is, 30 minutes because there's less information. Most likely the market has moved away from that previous point. And so when that happens, you know, you have less information in it. The information is less relevant than the real time one. Then you have the end of day. The end of day one predominantly is used for portfolio evaluation, marking your to, to market, mark to market, accounting purposes, you know, computing um, capital gains, daily capital gains, and things like that. The historical one is predominantly for research. When someone's conduct research, especially there was one thing I noted down that NISL um, CEO mentioned about the volatility and the market risk. The historical data with advanced model, you can actually try to predict what the volatility of that particular instrument is. The simplest one, which is very, which, which people don't even use anymore, is to take the whole entire historical price, compute the returns on it. When you compute the returns on it and take the standard deviation of it. But the thing that is in that one is that you're now seeing that the volatility is identical across board, which is not. But well, right now they have advanced model they can use to determine what is the volatility in that market. And that's why equities market is very, very interesting because it keeps moving. Then you can now be, you can now know what exactly do I need to do between two different instruments. And that's what historical data gives you. Reference data are static data. Okay, like information about the company. Um, 
um, let me try to look for one that is previous day price. That's not going to change. The price of yesterday's reference data. Once it gets to 230 now, the market closed, you get your EOD, the end of day report, and you now get uh, the price of all the shares, goes all the securities goes out. That is a reference, it becomes reference. Then I have derived data, which is the index, which is index and which they've alluded to. You can go to the next slide, please. So now, is data the new oil? Everybody's talking about data is the new oil and everything. I think from what I've said so far, we can see the value in it is limitless. Let's continue. By the time we get to the end, you'll be able to make that decision to see the importance of data in general. I've used data in general for, for purpose, but right now we're just strictly talking about market data. These are the sample use cases where you see data used by asset classes, you see data used by job function, the traders, what they use it for, sales, research, compliance, uh, portfolio management. You can see the ones that is used by the firm, brokerage firm investment. They have sets of data that they use because of their job function and what they want to achieve. Can we go to the next slide, please? Next slide, please. Okay, so now I just put up, well, you moved too far. Please go back one slide. Okay, now I put this up for a purpose and I purposely did that to emphasize how necessary market data is to investors. When you want to find price, there are two major models that people use, simple ones. They use a capital asset pricing model and you use a dividend discount. And I put them up here and I put a complex one and I put a simple one there. So what are the data needed? Number one, if you look at the cap model as it is, you can use it as simple as it is to be able to determine if it's underpriced or if it's overpriced. Now I use the portfolio P, you know, it'd be just one stock. So the data needed there is, you need the price, the historical data, you need it in that to be able to calibrate that model. Even if you want to compute the beta of it, you need the uh, market prices like NSE 30. You need the daily prices of it to be able to do that. You can see the essence of it. So you cannot calibrate a cap ham without not getting market data itself. And one thing is you have to get the market data from the right source, especially the historical one. And the reason is this, if you scrape around and you use wrong data, then your model is going to be off, completely off. There's no model that is 100%. Most models are less than 80% actually. But if you use the wrong data, you're guaranteed that you're completely off. If you look at the dividend discount model as well, you see that you need historical dividend. You want to, I, I like the expected, but you want to compute the expected dividend, but you need to get historical dividend if you want to use a simple one and take the mean out of it and say, that's what I, that is the expected dividend. But an advanced person will now say, okay, dividend, that means that they're profitable. Then I need to go into the financial statement to take out some numbers out of the financial statement and create this complex model to compute if they're profitable or not. And that is the essence that you can see that market data is highly essential in whatever it is that you're doing when you want to invest within the Nigerian stock exchange. And also, it even educates you more that when you talk to your brokers, NISL and others, that you're well informed and you can have good conversation and ask the right question about your investment because you've done your due diligence. That is the essence that I put this. So you can see even from the financial statement from the listed firms, which we have, is you can make sound decisions from the numbers that you get out of it. Now, let's go to the next, next screen.
Okay, now with all of this stuff we're talking about this data, the question is, how do I even get it? How do I have access to it? And like what NISL showed in that slide is the Virginia Stock Exchange has invested a lot into technology. And we're still doing research and all the kind of stuff in technology to make this data available to you seamlessly. We've engaged a couple of, of our current clients, some brokerage firms that we have, uh, that have licensed through us when it comes to market data to see how can we improve it because we have other stuff coming. But the first one that we released was this X data portal. This is a portal where you can join for free. You can make requests for your data, research, investment, historical, real time, whatever the reference, whatever data that you need, you can request for it and you can get it. We also even have ad hoc. The ones you can find there, you can complete a form and that form comes to us, the market services, we provide the data to you. We ask you questions, what you need. And we know the exact data that you need and we add, provide it to you at a fee, which is minimal as far as the information that you get from the, uh, the data itself. So in all, we have, we, as an investor, you have to understand that informed decisions, it's the key for you to know which asset class that you want to invest in. And that is one thing that data presents you so that you can now do your due diligence through your research, through your reading, through your anything, conversation, even at the brokerage firms too. They come and they have, they have um, a market data license with us and we have to give them access to it. And we're improving it. And so in the next few years, you get a few months, you guys will see other ways you can get the data from, from Digest Stock Exchange. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is, this is the screen from the market data itself. You can see the NSC 30 activities. <clears throat> you can see the prices scrolling. There are menus at the top, the product subscriptions, you know, your downloads. If you have received something still that you can go back and get it. And the ad hoc request is there. If you want to ask us something that you didn't find, you can actually get it there. And also on the side, we have places where you put ads which is extra information and things like that. Can you go to the next slide, please? And these are other ways that you can get our market data API. This is where if you have an application that you know you want to consume the data rather than getting the Excel files, that you want to consume the data from your program, you can talk to us, we'll provide you an API where you can get all this have access to all these uh, market data. Next slide, please. And I hope that I've made it, uh, I haven't confused you more, that I've made all the investors here today to understand that, that um, market data plays a major role. And, you know, you can come to us on market services and, um, you know, whatever it is that you need, concerning the market data of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, we'll be able to uh, provide you access to it. I want to thank you guys, and um, I apologize for the early, uh, earlier uh, issues with uh, connectivity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Balugo. That was uh, Mr. Femi Balugo of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, delivering a presentation captioned uh, market data as a tool for achieving investment objectives. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you've listened to both of our, our speakers provide clarity and enlightenment on market data and product innovations as they both relate to our investment needs. And now it is time for the question and answer session. As mentioned earlier, you may type your questions in the chat space and in doing so, please remember to include your name, your location, organization and indicate who your question is directed at and then go ahead and ask your questions. We will take the questions in batches of four and then we'll give our speakers a chance to answer the questions before we move on to the next batch. Um, so we have a few questions here. Um, let me start by asking the first set of questions. Um, I have a couple of questions here from Igodalo Akinian. Um, 
you did not indicate who your questions were for, but I assume your questions are for uh, Mr. Martins of uh, Nigerian International Stock um, Securities Limited. Um, your questions are, how has the pandemic affected the market price and the economy at large? And the second question is, would investing in stock at this time be profitable or advisable? Um, I have another question here for Mr. Martins as well from Solomon Akman. He says, how liquid is an investment in REITs? And also uh, a similar question from Adeshola Arowo Bandamu. This question is, kindly share recent performance of, of some REITs that are currently in existence. So um, I'll give Mr. Martins a chance to answer those questions before we move on to the next batch of questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, AKG. And thank you um, all the um, members of the audience that provided um, these questions. The first question that asked how the pandemic has affected the market and stock prices. Well, what I would say is it's a very interesting um, story as to what happened. Um, at the beginning of the year, the returns on the stock exchange had risen very quickly and we were one of the highest um, returning exchanges in the world. And then towards the beginning of March, the market started to fall, um, prices started to come down because some parts of the market, the very foreign investors were selling stocks. But it's important to note that at the time COVID took off, when the lockdown started, the market was perhaps about negative 9% or so. And by the end of March, when the negative news and the fear of the pandemic, the fear of what will happen to the economy was at its peak, the exchange, the returns on the exchange had gone to as low as minus 20.65. However, between then and now, when the economy has set to open back up, as initially anticipated, we are now at a situation where the year-to-date return is minus 4.73. So it means that between the end of March and today, the market gained 16% of 15. In my view, that is very remarkable. And then to answer your question, if I I would say, I think every one of us companies, individuals, um, small, big com um, companies, we've all come to realize that a lot of things we used to do that were our culture in terms of the workspace and all that are probably not required. So we expect that you would see a lot of um, cost savings strategies coming up. You would see people rethinking the way they work. You would see people rethinking the way they carry out their production, et cetera. And we expect that that would most likely help a lot of these companies even perform better into the future. Without a doubt, some companies might be more badly hit and you might have some downturns. And then to talk about the impact on the economy at large. I mean, we've seen information from the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics that shows that um, GDP has slowed down. However, it's not as bad as we all expected. So in a nutshell, COVID has negatively affected the market, but I would say the stock, the stock market in particular has rebounded significantly because people saw that perhaps there was much more fear than was reasonable. Then on the second question that asked if it is still a good idea or a good investment decision to invest in stocks today, I would say without a doubt that investing in stocks today is still a good idea, it's still a good investment decision. However, you have to pick your stocks carefully. And that is why you need to talk to your stock brokers, you know, wherever, um, whoever you trade with. At NISL, our research platform um, would also be able to guide people and give you advice. But generally speaking, the safest way to deal now is to look at the companies that have a very good track record. Companies that have performed well over the last two, three, five years, and you expect they'll continue to perform well. Of course, we say in investment that um, past performance is not necessarily a guarantee of future performance. However, it provides 
it provides a good guide. And what we advise people is right now, perhaps you shouldn't be too um, speculative. So just go for the stocks that have very strong dividend yields. Like I said earlier, the likes of Zenith, Zenith I think has a dividend yield of about 15 to 18% perhaps. GTB has about 12. Dangote Cement, maybe 10, 12. So they're big companies, solid companies that will give you returns that are much better than um, the traditional fixed income securities. Those are the ones we'd advise you to go for. And then on the last question, who asked, um, I think it was Shola Arobadam, my good friend. This is uh, my friend from secondary school. Interesting that he, he, he latched onto this, thank you. So he asked how liquid rates are. Um, to be honest, right now, REITs on the Nigerian Stock Exchange are not as liquid as we would like them to be. And perhaps that is one of the reasons why the Stock Exchange has brought up this sort of webinar in order to educate the public, educate real estate, um, retail investors. Because the reality is liquidity is created by participation in the market. Right now, a lot of people, perhaps majority of people who have accounts on the Nigerian Stock Exchange do not even know about REITs. So the more people know about them and they begin to participate, the more liquid that security will become. You know, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If we invest in it, it will become liquid, right? And you asked what the returns of some of the REITs are recently. Um, unfortunately, I only have information on one of the REITs. I think there are about three or four. Um, UPDC REIT is perhaps one of the largest. They recently on the, went through some restructuring, etc. And we see that um, in 2017, it returned about 4.89. In 2018, it returned about 7%. Um, and then year to date, it's returned about 15.26. I mean, when you look at the dividend yields, uh, I mean, this is separate from um, capital appreciation, right? So I hope I've been able to answer those questions appropriately. Thank you. Over to you, Okechi. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Uh, we'll move on to our next batch of questions. Um, I have uh, a couple of questions here for Mr. Femi Balogo, and uh, I think one or two for you, Mr. Martins. I will go with uh, Mr. Balogun's questions first. Um, the first one is, uh, anonymous, he doesn't have a name, but he says, why can't we get NSC data in Yahoo Finance or Google Finance or any other online data streaming websites? Um, the second question is also a, a data related question also for Mr. Femi Balogun. He says, uh, why, why do we have 15 minutes? Why is up to 15 minutes that are still considered real time data? Um, the question for Mr. Martins says, where can we get the NISL Pro Trader? So please, there's, there's been a couple of questions about where we can get NISL Pro Trader. So please, Mr. Balogun, go ahead and answer. And then uh, Mr. Martins can answer his questions before we move on to the next batch of questions. All right, um, thank you very much, Ekechi. Um, NSC data on Yahoo or Google Finance is based on license. We have we have vendors, international vendors. Um, we have um, Thomson Reuters. You can get our data on Thomson Reuters. You can get our data on Bloomberg. Um, when I first joined, I contacted um, Yahoo Finance, and the question that what they said to me then was that most of the people that ask for NSC data predominantly goes to Thomson Reuters and Bloomberg. That they've tried it in the past to try to put it out there, but people always go to theirs. And so they didn't see the need for them to get from Yahoo Finance and Google Finance as well. That was Yahoo Finance then. So, but if you want our data, if you're local, you can get our data directly from us. That's the reason why we have the API. That's the reason why we have all that stuff. But if you want to go and get it from a vendor, you can go to Thomson Reuters website, you can go to Bloomberg website, you can go to um, Global Mar Market Access website, which is Director Fen. 
You can go to six financial websites. You can get it there. You can go to um, Jeffrey's website. You can get it there. You get it a whole lot of places, but there's a license that is required for you to have access to the data. There's a lot of places where you can get data. That's not an issue. That's the reason why we don't have it there. So when it comes to big data and small data, um, I'll just go quickly about the big data. Big data is large data sets that you cannot use traditional methodology to analyze. That you cannot easily just store it in the database and pull it off. It take days sometimes for you to be able to get a data set. So they have this kind of combination of hardware and software that can make you split the data into chunks and make your analysis from it. So that's the reason why they coined the word big data. So it's just that it's just a large data set that you cannot process the regular way. Small data is, is break big data into small data. I haven't heard about the coin the word small data, but you're talking about the data set itself. It's small, maybe that's what you mean by that, then any existing process you can use to handle that. But that is the reason for the big data. Now, why is uh, 15 minutes? There's technology involved. So that's the essence of it. There's technology involved. And also, we still believe that due to analysis, I can't go into, into all the details of that is that any market price that you get within 15 minutes still has value, even if it has changed. And even if you look at, you know, if you look at um, some time series models that they use, I believe that researchers at NISL can, will be able to, you know, speak to a whole lot of this. I can't really go to because I'm now getting real technical about it is that the information you have now and the price you have before, right before it, there's a lot of information in both of them. So if we ignore only the, the, the last one, then the weight that you put on the rest of them, you need to put some weight on it. And that's the essence of the reason why that most exchanges around the world, not only just Nigerian stock exchange, even some exchanges is three minutes. Some exchanges is three minutes. But after three minutes, that is our, anything after three minutes, you go to delayed. But three minutes is, it's um, real time. So the reason for that is based on the models that we have and based on technology is the reason why the standard across most exchanges is 15 minutes. So we just didn't pick that 15 minutes. I hope that um, I've been able to answer your question and thank you for the question. Take it back to you. Uh, thank you, Femi. Um, Lalu, I think it, you can answer the question now on um, on uh, where people can get the NISL Pro Trader. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, largely, in order to access the Pro Trader, and every investor has to open an account with NISL first, because obviously that is where you now um, have the application to use. All our investors have the application, or at least have access to use it. Some might not um, um, decide to use it. Um, it's also important to note, I got another question. Someone was asking me if it's only the big companies that pay very good dividends. And it's very interesting that some of the perceived smaller companies or penny stocks, as we, like, we might like to call them, also pay very high dividends. For example, you have AfriPrudential. I believe their dividend yields right now is about 14%, which is very, very strong. You have the likes of um, United Capital, you have Fidelity Bank, um, and quite a host, um, a host of others. All this, a lot of this information is available if you have access to, you know, our ProTrade IA, one of our clients. And really on the Nigerian Stock Exchange website, you can get all this information too. Thank you. Thank you, Ekichi. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Um, the next batch of questions, I have two questions here for Mr. Balogo and uh, two questions for Mr. Martins. Um, I'll take the questions for Mr. Mr. Martins first. He's, this is a question from Frank Namka. He says, hi everyone and good day. 
uh, kindly provide more information on ETFs traded on the NSC? And where and how can I source information about the constituents of the funds and their, and their weightings? Um, the second question is um, from Stephen Olowo. He says, I would want to know if an individual who is looking at making a relatively small investment can go ahead using the mobile application without going through a broker and how safe and efficient can that be? Um, I'll just take the questions also for Mr. Balogo and then uh, our panelists can answer the questions immediately. So Mr. Balogo's questions are, the first one is from Akionla Oguyemi. Um, he says, why is NSC data, especially historical, not available for instant query or download to users? Why are we still using permission or requisition pattern to, to provide historical data to users of data? Um, the second question is also for Mr. Balogo and it's, uh, it's from Michael Okafo. He says, good day, sir. For a retail investor and an individual, what are the cost implications of the applications and having access to NSC market data? Thank you. So we can go ahead and answer those questions now. I think uh, Mr. Martins will go first with the questions and then uh, Mr. Balogun will take his questions. Okay, thank you, Ekechi. Um, I think I only got the first question actually. Uh, that was a question to provide more information about ETFs traded on the ex exchange and where um, investors can get the constituents of each ETF. Currently, there are 12 ETFs traded on the stock exchange um, by various um, fund managers. Um, I believe that the exchange uh, would, can provide information, I think on the website, as to these um, ETFs. And largely, um, you have um, ETFs that cover various asset classes. A good example is the new gold ETF, which covers investments in, which I mean, the underlying securities is um, investments in gold assets. You have the Lotus Halal, like I mentioned in my presentation, you have the VSP bond ETF, which tracks the Nigerian sovereign bond index uh, space, and you know a host of others. Um, so, like I said, if you contact a broker or perhaps um, search on the stock exchange um, uh, website, you would get more info, a lot more information on this, and you can contact the fund managers of those um, ETFs also. Um, AKG, please. Can you help me with the second question, if there was one? Yes, uh, the second question is from Ol Olowo Stephen. I hope I got that right. Um, he says he, he would like to know if an individual who is looking at making a relatively small investment can go ahead using a mobile application without going through a broker. And how safe and efficient can that be? Thank you. Um, well, basically, to invest in the stock market, you still need to go through a broker in the sense that each of those applications are routed through one broker or the other. You cannot invest directly, um, so to speak, um, because you need a CSS account, which would ha house your um, securities and all that, and that is, you have to do through a stock broker. You cannot just walk to the stock exchange and say you want to buy shares. That's why the stock brokers are there. They are called them, um, you know, the market participants that provide that service. I hope I've been able to answer that question. But yes, with a small amount and go through a stock broker, you can invest in any of these um, securities we've spoken about earlier. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Martins. Um, Mr. Balugo, if you're there, can you please answer the questions uh, on on data? Thank you. Okay, um, for um, the one of the questions that was directed to Mr. Martins about getting the constituents and um, the weighting. Um, you can get the constituent from the website, but there are some information that you might not be able to get that you have to come directly to market services. So if you wanted to get those underlying information based on the, either an ETF or an index or, or, or um, 
whatever or on um, or just the concern of an index directly you can come to the market services and we'll be able to provide you that at a fee reason is this which will take me into the cost implication is there are what the people do to be able to get this thing across to you so in for example when it comes to the index itself the research that goes into the index and the exchange for us to be able to select the constituent of the exchange Based on that, there are rules that we have, the research that we go through, determine what are the weights that we're going to put on each individual constituent and all the kind of stuff that we want to do. Those things are time consuming, and I think that's the value add. Now, when it comes to um, historical data, why, what was that question again about the historical data? Is it the access to it is, is not straightforward or that, AKG, can you help me with the second question, please, about why, about the historical data? The I mean, second question is, uh, why is NSC data, um, especially historical, not available for instant query or download to users? Why are we still using permission or requisition pattern to provide historical data to users on data? Well, if, if, I, if I want to... to uh, we have to eat too. Let's look at it from that point of view. And that's just, you know, it's, it's their value to it in fair honesty. If you look at everything that I've said, that every exchange in the world, because they're a value to it, it, might, it costs to be able to even store those data. It costs to be able to produce those data itself. There are huge costs to it. And so when you now factor that into it, then, and, and I know there's no one that wants to be in business to lose and you have to know that, you know, and I've showed you the model that I showed you earlier, you know, that add value to your reasoning for your decision and things like that. It has value to it. And anything that had value, I think there's always a cost to it. So that's, the, that's one of the primary reasons is how do how we get the data to you. So it's not as if it's there, you know, there's no, I work there, there are other people that work in the department. We have huge services. We have uh, databases, we have all those things, licenses, those costs. And that's one of the major reasons that you have uh, the, you know, the, uh, it's not, you, I would say it's not readily available. It's just that you have to go to, go to, through the data portal and you have to get it from there. And the reason why we do that is so that at least it gives us an insight what people are doing with the data itself to know what I did in that request for. So by the end of the day, we can now get that and know how we can advance the service, as the essence for it. And I think I've answered Mr. Okafo's and Michael with the cost implication. The cost is, it depends on for locals, that is for local investors. It depends on what you need the data for. For student, there's huge discount when it comes to student, massive discount for student because they're not making money with it. Well, for professionals, we believe that you're using the data to be able to make a decision and there's a cost to it. And the cost is not even huge, in fair honesty. When you go to data portal and you see price list there, you see that most of them are affordable. That's, 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 that's um, I, I believe that should have, that will answer the question from Mr. Michael Okafo. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for your answers, um, Mr. Balogo and Mr. Martins. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the president of the CIS is here with us now. Um, he had some challenges and couldn't join us earlier, but he's here now and he's ready and able to take his remarks. So um, please, I'd like to welcome the president of the Chartered Institute of Stockbrokers, Mr. Am Olatunde Amolebe. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that uh, kind introduction. I hope, I hope I'm audible. <clears throat> thank, you, thank you very much for that introduction. Um, uh, again, please uh, kindly accept my apology for coming to this late. Uh, it was um, just simply due to reasons well beyond my control. Um, I've been listening for a while and I see that uh, quite a bit has, uh, has been said. I, uh, will not um, 
my remark will not be you know, will not drag too long. Um, I would like to use this opportunity to express my delight at uh, being given this the privilege of being part of this uh, important webinar and to share a few thoughts on the subject um, capital market investing in the in digital age. Um, we at CIS has a, have a long history of uh, mutual and uh, very productive relationship with the NSC and uh, our members being uh, operators of the NSC have had to experience firsthand the transformation of the NSC from a from a paper-based open outcry market to a to a one that is um, you know that is digi digitally driven, and um, you know we, we really appreciate that uh, that uh, transformation was actually brought home fully to us uh, by uh, the ability we got to be able to operate seamlessly during the during the recent lockdown that we were experiencing in the, in the, in the country. So uh, the NSC uh, can be said to be a market that has market that has uh, uh, we cannot say we are there totally. We know what it is that. Um, Digital, digital transformation has achieved in other markets. Uh, the um, the the, the uh, tech heavy um, Nasdaq market in the U.S. is um, almost twice or three times the size of the of the um, of the regular what you would refer to as a regular market, uh, which um, you know demonstrates the potential of digital uh, digital digital um, uh, technology in uh, in. Uh, in presenting opportunities to the market. And, um, you know, we, we, we feel that with time and with the cooperation of all, all players in the market, we will be able to uh, make further progress uh, in, in, the mark, in the market space. Uh, we've gone from a situation where, uh, you know, you cannot, uh, you cannot open an account, or an investment account in Nigeria uh, without having to physically be present in your, in your stockbroker's office. Uh, to, to a situation where the platform Okay, it appears we may be having um, some uh, um, network challenges uh, at the end of the CIS president, uh, Mr. Uh, Amolebe. Okay. okay, I think he's back here now. Um, Mr. Amolebe, we can hear you now. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you so much for that, moderator. So uh, we know that there's quite, still quite some way to go. We've not, um, we've not started algo trading in our markets. Uh, I think that, I think the NSC is working on bringing that on stream. Uh, and, um, there are still quite a lot of, um, a lot of challenges that we, I believe that digital, uh, digital um, you know, investing will help to, 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 to uh, you know, uh, that still quite a piece of issues in the market which uh, digital, uh, digital trading will help us to solve. For instance, uh, we know that, you know, we have a market we have a Nigeria population of close to 200 million people, but at present we have um, only about 5 million uh, Nigerians owning a CSCS account. And uh, what we even I think um, I think we've lost uh, the CIS president again, um, Mr. Molekbe. 
but uh, we'll move on with the, the other other um, other things on the agenda for the program today. So we thank you, sir, for those remarks. Um, it's always a pleasure to have you here with us at the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, before I close, uh, before I invite um, the divisional head of the Nigerian Stock Exchange to deliver the closing remarks, um, I have a couple of questions here that are directed to the CEO of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Um, the very first question is from Christian Roche. I hope I got that pronunciation right. He's the head of operations at Kinesis Money. He wants to know the standing of the NSC on providing allocated gold and silver as digital asset instruments, which provides a yield to the holder or retail investor. That is the very first question. Um, after the CEO answers, I will ask the second question that's directed to him. Thank you. Okay, yeah, um, thank you very much. Uh, we're very open to uh, you know, blockchain technology and providing digital assets. And indeed, we've done some work in that space. So certainly we're open to this uh, um, and uh, stay tuned. Sorry, Akechi, what was the second question? Okay, that's uh, that's the question that we have for the CEO. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for answering that question. Um, the second question that we have now is on mobile apps. Uh, the the person wants to know if investors are able to to invest in the market using mobile apps and without going through a broker. Please go ahead, sir. So all the uh, other management systems. Uh, that are provided around the world, including Nigeria, are actually provided by brokers. So you can log on to any of these uh, apps and trade. Uh, you may not need to interact with a human being, but your account is maintained with a broker. The uh, order management system is uh, linked to the exchange's execution management system, which is called XGEN. Um, so it might seem to you that you're coming to us without a broker, but indeed, uh, there's a broker intermediating that uh, transaction. Um, I hope I've answered your question. So you must access the exchange through a broker, uh, even though in using the applications or other management systems provided by brokers, uh, you, you can do everything uh, by yourself on those uh, applications. Thank you very much, CEO, for your answers. Um, I would like to, I, I think the CIS president is back here with us again, Mr. Amolebeb. If you are here, please go ahead and conclude. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Um, I, I believe that digital technology can help us to solve some, some current issues in the market. First of all, increasing our coverage. I mean, we cannot have um, five, it's not, it cannot be said to be acceptable to have 5 million CSES uh, accounts in a country with 200 million people. So with, with difficult, with digital technology, we can increase our coverage and uh, provide stability for our market and increase participation, that's one. Number two, we are, the, the, the issue of uh, unclaimed dividend is a, is a, is a clear and present issue within our market. With the application of digital technology, we will be able to solve that problems. And you know, hopefully that will increase, uh, increase participation in the market. Uh, number three, with, digi with digital technology, we will be able to also move the process of transfer of ownership of shares faster than it is presently. All right, and with that, hopefully that will also, uh, you know, encourage encourage uh, more participants to come to the market um I, you know i thank the nsa for giving me the opportunity to make uh, this uh, short remarks uh, you know uh, it's so uh, it's my hope that uh, the people that have joined us today has um, learned a few things and uh, 
uh, these seminars like this will encourage them to want to increase their participation or uh, introduce new people to, part to come in as participants into our marketplace. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you very much for your remarks. Um, moving on now, please, I would like to call on the divisional head of the trading business at the Nigerian Stock Exchange, Mr. Jude Chemeka, to deliver the closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, EKG. Um, indeed, it's been a, a great pleasure for us to uh, host this event. And I would like to just thank all our speakers uh, for their detailed presentations and for providing us such insightful answers to all the engaging uh, questions. It's encouraging to know that at, at times of uncertainty such as we're currently facing, uh, there are investment options and channels which are modern, uh, convenient, and very secure. I would like to thank the Nigerian International Securities Limited for collaborating with us as a key sponsor for this uh, webinar and for their insightful presentation as well. I'd also like to thank the National Council of Management of the Nigerian Stock Exchange for their unwavering commitment to pursuing financial inclusion uh, and investor education as a means to achieving economic development uh, within the country. I would like to also thank the president of the Chartered Institute of Stock Brokers, Mr. Olatunde uh, Amolabe, as, the, as well as the Association of Securities Building Houses of Nigeria Action uh, for their continued support. I would like to thank my colleagues in Retail Investor Coverage uh, Department for putting this event together. Uh, also our in-house uh, expert, uh, Femi Balogu, for taking us through the implication of data and, and what it actually means uh, in investing in a digital economy. And I hope that you found our presentation useful. Um, I also like to thank my colleagues in our IT and corporate communications team uh, for putting this whole uh, webinar together. Most importantly, I would like to thank you, the attendees, for taking our time to join this webinar. For all the questions that were, we were unable to answer uh, for want of time, uh, I'd like to assure you that certainly we will respond via emails uh, to you and to make sure that the engagement continues uh, to go on outside of this event. I would also like to ask you to, be, to send us an email if you require further information uh, regarding all the co components of what we have talked about today. Uh, I think the, the email address will be displayed on the screen and we're we'll very happy to come back to you. Thank you very much and continue to stay safe. Thank you, Mr. Chemeka, uh, for officially bringing this event to a close. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time, uh, your comments, your, and uh, your questions and your participation. Um, as uh, Mr. Chemeka said, all your questions will be answered. We will send them to you by email, and um, um, we will get in touch with you. If there's any other question that you have, please go ahead and send your questions to the email that's displayed on the screen. Have a good evening and a great week ahead. Thank you.